John. 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 <laughs> What's a John? It was like 2 a.m. and he was tired. John's like John's. He'll get me on my on the days where I'm just not playing too well. John's, just John's. A lot of people don't know where the term came from. It just started, but I believe it was a guy in Texas. Texas. His name yeah. was John. And no matter what, every time he'd lose, he'd have an excuse. He'd have a reason for losing. <laughs> my controller wasn't working. The stage, there's a little bit of lag on the TV. I didn't sleep last night, or I don't know why I'm not too cold. I need a warm hurt. up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man. We have a like a Swedish term, Inga Jonas. It's pretty much no Johns. He used to like using much yawns back in the time. My favorite one, I think, was uh, I was playing somebody and they were like, someone's touching my shoulder. And I was like, no Johns. <laughs> I was like really into the word true that for some reason. That, that's like when the word just f first came out, like everybody was saying it. And so I was like walking down the street and like <laughs> walking home from the school and I'm just like true that, yeah, true that, true that. I'm just <laughs> I, I said it so much that it became my name. Smash tag is chaotic. Sago. Solid Jake is my tag in the Smash community. JV3X3, just random numbers and initials. Some people create the tag when they're younger. Chillin' Dude 829. Morg. Unknown Force. <laughs> W-I-F-E Wife. As you get older, you realize you don't want that like name to like stick to you. I like it, I enjoy it. Today's winner is Dr. Pee Pee. Come on. <laughs> it's built a little identity around it, so I identify with it. If I could go back and change it, I probably would. I would be something cool like Dark Rain. But as it is, I'm, I'm wife and, uh, and I identify with it. I wouldn't say that I, I found myself in Smash, but I found a second self in Smash. Having this gamer tag and this alternate life and this alternate set of friends, this alternate set of goals, allowed me to have an identity that was very different in, in regular life. Some people will call me the most positive person they've met. I'm a very positive person, but in Smash, I'm, I'm arrogant. I'm arrogant and I can be condescending and I know what I want and I'm aggressive and forceful and it's fun to have that second identity. I wonder how many people found a community where they were able to express themselves where they couldn't before. I think that Asin may be one of those, and I, I don't know about Asin's real-world personality. I can't say that for sure, but I can say that his personality in the Smash world is very cool, and I did get to know that Asin. He's one of those players who's just completely 100% like all like thinking. He's actually the only person to ever beat me in tournament in a Samus duo. No one's ever done that, and it was early. I'd probably be able to beat him a little later in my career. They were calling the master of all the characters, and he was good with all of them, all 26. And he would beat a lot of people with their own character. And it was kind of embarrassing, because he'd have these people that specialize in characters, and he'd beat them. And his style was just very unique, very like, it was almost dumb how he played the game. It's one thing to just learn the game in one way, but like, he seemed to master it in a different way. He would do a Marth forward smash like three times in a row. It's like, you missed the first time, you missed the second time, there's no way he's gonna do it the third time. You do it the third time, you're like, that's so stupid, why did I just get hit by that? He might not even be able to control the character to, to like make it look like a top tier character, but like he'll just beat you anyway. It was very ugly, <laughs> but he won, and he won a lot. Asen and H2IL won most of their contests with the other East Coast elites, Deadly Alliance and Team Ben. Meanwhile, the newly minted champion of the West Coast had just met a player who would forever change the face of Smash, and he didn't even play the game. I actually met Isaiah at TG4. He was a Smash 64 player. He didn't even play Melee at all. He actually money matched me at Smash 64. 
and I thought I was really good at there. I was like, you know what? I don't know I should money match you. You're probably gonna lose. And Jay was like, no, no, let's just money match. I saw Isaiah, how he's playing 64 and he was, he was amazing. I was like, oh shit. So I was like, you know what Isaiah? Let's just cancel the money match. He's like, what, how come? I was like, I'm not feeling it. So I told him like, no money match. I was talking to Isaiah about uh, melee and stuff online that I think he has potential to be good because he's really got 64. I was got 64 and it carried over. You should come down two weeks before TG5 and I'll house you. We can practice, become partners, and I think we could be really good. Eventually, we became really good training partners, kind of like sparring. We would uh, go off each other. As an and 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 we're visiting a friend in California, so they're like, okay, as long as we're over here, let's go to a tournament over here. This was 03, summer of 03. TG5, when it first happened, um, everybody was pretty hyped. It's the best East Coast players at the time, best men with players at the time, all going to one place and Matt is hosting it. Who's better, Ken or Azen? Ken or Azen? And this tournament was gonna resolve that all. Azen advanced through the bracket and seemed to be doing well until he faced Reciferous. <laughs> and lost a chic ditto. Knocked into loser's bracket, Azen again fought a chic ditto, this time against Isaiah. With a one-two punch, Azen was knocked out of the top three and out of the money. It seemed, even without their top player, the West Coast was indeed the best coast. But something about the tournament didn't sit well with the boys from the East, and they made it known that in their eyes, the victory was a complete and utter farce. The funny thing about this tournament was items were on, which we were not fans of. You know, there was a constant debate about the West Coast versus East Coast about items and no items and stuff. I love items. I think, I think they're fun as hell. They're, they're no, but it's no place in a tournament. And they used them like regularly and they had like a pretty crazy items list too. Ridiculous things would constantly happen. You know, you grab a Pokeball, like you don't know what's in there. Hearing the stories about the tournament, items definitely had an, an effect on the outcome. So we wanted a tournament like on our turf with our rules where we still had Ken and Isaiah represented and proved to them that basically on our home turf with our rules, you can't beat us. They wanted, you know, West Coast players to come over there. Obviously, like the only two West Coast players they wanted to come over there was me and Isaiah. We wanted revenge. Here we are off to the turn. It's my buddy Ken. It sucks. <laughs> oh, that's it. Chops. I don't know who this is. Right? It's a Mexican guy. Yeah. American Legion. Nobody here. It was just like the place. There's nothing around. There was just like no food places around. It's just where the turn it was. There's my partner practicing. Who are these people? Oh, it's Joshua. How was the drive? I was just so excited. Like, look at all these people from all over the country come to play Melee. DA showed up in full force. We even had a couple Canada people. Uh, I think that's the first time I actually met husband and wife too. Right here. The newlyweds. I saw your picture. This is my. That's wicked. That's awesome. There, there's a counterpart to my wife, yeah, husband, of course, um, which has been very difficult over the years. I can't tell you how many times I've had to explain to someone that I'm not gay, I'm not in a gay relationship, it's just a thing. The Newlyweds was a TV show with Nick and Jessica, and that was part of it, but also Peach wears a white wedding dress, and she looks like a bride, and so it was silly. Is this chilling? chilling? It's chilling. Yeah. Yeah. It's chilling. It? Chilling? Awesome. He's running this whole deal. He's got the money in his hand. When Game Over happened, I was 14, so... I mean, I was still very young during this entire thing. Where did you guys come from? New York City. New York City? Good to meet you. Just trying to meet everyone here. Sorry to show the camera in your face. I'm going to own everyone here today. You're going to kick some fucking ass? Who's this? Samantha. Samantha? Yeah. Are you playing? Yeah. Oh my god, it's Mike. I'm Mike from Canada. How are you doing? In the days before YouTube, Mike and the Punch crew were one of the only video options in town and they shared a sophisticated commentary on the game itself. Mostly sophisticated. Give up the stick! Don't give up the stick! They haven't heard of you guys. What? They Punch crew? What happened? Ouch! The internet, as well as the community, was still very young. 
all around the room quiet. They talk all the shit on the internet and they, in person, it's just like Anyone in the community, you have like two personalities. You have like their online personality and then when you meet them in person. There's a lot of talk online, you know that? Alright, play them in person, they're not like that's how it is. They want to draw you here, that's all. The first team tournament uh, came on. The East Coast at the time weren't too big on teams. They didn't really care. It's all about singles. So Isaiah and I just like stomped through that whole entire bracket. We owned them. I'm pretty sure no one took a game off them. Winners finals happened and that was just brutal. Like Azen and Andon got decimated by Ken and Isaiah and it was never really close. Teams did have the $300 pop bonus, which is mainly why Ken and Isaiah came, I think, knowing that they had teams pretty much in the bag. And after it ended, it's like, okay, so there you got what you wanted. Now it's time for, you know, singles and whatnot. It took the longest time to actually get singles started because I had to write the whole bracket out by hand. Stage 2 l was all doing well. That encouraged me just knowing that, you know, my crew is legit. I was just focused on running the tournament for a while until I saw that I had to fight Ken. The match was, was crazy because I can remember, like, at first, we were playing on a little screen. Take one life off. Timbers two. I remember playing Azen's Marth in uh, friendlies a lot that week in preparation, and I would get up throw up airs a lot, but I never got them as much as during that first match against Ken. Okay, this strategy is really, really good, and I should probably be using this like at all times. The trill one is simply this. You throw somebody upwards and then hit them with an up air. You mean repeat it so you can get that or? Jay Tannic was getting really hyped for me and that just started to draw a crowd. I can think of very few times in my melee career where I've been like, oh yeah, I really like the fact that the crowd was in my ear, you know? I did a really good combo on him. I threw him up and I smashed him across the screen. Oh shit. All I had to do was smash him out. He came back. At that point, I'm freaking out. Oh. And I hit him with a uh, neutral air, send him off. I see him coming back, and this is a situation I'd seen so many times with Azen, so I knew what was gonna happen, and I just waved Dash back, let him put out a forward air, and up smashed him. Up smash. I, I never felt like that good, like ever, probably. That might have been like the highlight of my life to that point. I was never used to losing. I mean, that, that, that was a major shock that um, I can't believe I actually lost too when I, I lost to Chillin' Dude. And when someone told me like not too long after that, like, yo, that was Ken's first loss in the bracket, and I'm like, oh my God. It was so close, like I could have I could have done so many things differently, got a little bit more sleep or something the night before, a little bit of food or something, I could have definitely beaten him. But it was, <laughs> I lost, and the worst part was that I lost to Chillin' Dude. <laughs> it turned me from like just this guy that plays Melee for fun to like a, an actual pro player, in my opinion. After I beat Ken at that point in Winners, pretty much all of us in H2IL thought Isaiah was the beast. We all thought Ken was just, you know, the overhype, not, not very good, like decent, but you know, overhype. And Isaiah was like really, really good, just based on watching his matches and playing him and stuff. The San Jose native couldn't help but attract attention. He used the wildest, most unwieldy character in the game. But unlike everyone else who tried, Isaiah made him look good. In winner's finals, Azen was waiting for him. Azen versus Isaiah was like one of the first insanely high level melee matches where you can watch it and just see the level of like mind games going on.
at that point, as in had beat Isaiah, I'd beat Ken. You know, we, we thought, you know, we had pretty much taken it. But the thing that really killed us was that we were focused on Isaiah. Like, Isaiah is a problem here. Let's talk about how to beat Isaiah. But Ken ended up coming back through losers and, you know, just going on a rampage. I was determined. I had, I had, the, I had the eye of the tiger. You know, he beat Dave. He beats Isaiah. And now at the time we're thinking, okay, Isaiah just let Ken win for some reason because Isaiah's a lot better. I felt more comfortable and then I fought Chilling Dude again. I wasn't nearly as focused, which had slightly to do with the time and how late it was and I'd been running the tournament all day. I beat the shit out of him, but I took him out. Even at that point, I still didn't think, you know, Ken was, you know, anything crazy. We'll see what happens, but Asin should, you know, wrap this up pretty quick. It's two sets, you know. never let up and I mean Asin's not the type to do that either but Asin didn't have as much of a game plan going in like if he had played Ken in more friendlies or had just expected Ken to come out he might have had a better game plan ready and things might have gone different but Ken did end up coming all the way back and taking it and Asin, Asin was oh man Asin was sad like I, I saw his face he was sad like I would be sad too but I mean he was representing the East Coast at the time I mean I, I pulled in possible again and I managed to come out on top You could tell at times like he was upset about his play or something like that, but he did a very good job of hiding it. No word could better describe Asin than unassuming. He is loath to accept his greatness. For all the games that he's good at besides just Melee, where he holds these world records in a game that he just picked up just because whatever, because he's Asin. Not only is he just mellow and kind of goes with the flow, you know, because he doesn't really want to put up a fight, I think he really wants to do everything you say. You know, it's like, hey Asin, do you want to play Smash for 12 hours in a row and not eat? I do. But it's not just about the game. Hey, Asin, let's take a road trip to Michigan. Asin, let's put on show tunes. We're going to sing Little Mermaid. And we did sing Little Mermaid. And all those 12, 14-hour trips to the Midwest, he's great company and a great guy. Dang, man, we're going to lose the Japs. Man, we scared of the Japs. Players in different countries in emerging scenes like America and Japan didn't actually verse much at all or integrate in any way, so we didn't have a clear indication of which country was better. But from watching the videos, the Japanese are far more impressive in their technical aspects and their creativity. There was, a, I guess, a realization that Japan players were probably at the forefront of the metagame at the time, and Captain Jack was the person who was promoting the Japanese scene. The question remained, Japan or America? For some, the issue was already settled, but with TG6 around the corner, Matt Deasy saw an opportunity. He invited a few of the top Japanese players to compete in the States, 
including the formidable Captain Jack. Asin went to that. Chu went to that. That was a great tournament. To be honest, when, when we were having those back and forths, who's the second best in H2IL, it was most often Chu, more so than the, any of the rest of us. In addition to being the first international tournament, TG6 would finally put an end to an annoying West Coast practice. I remember a match that I saw at TG5 where it was Eddie the Gandor Flair. Matt Deasy, he lost several matches because of items. One of them was to me. It was a Sizor. I remember this too. I hit one Pokeball and it was like a Firebird and he was caught in it. And then I hit him with another Pokeball and I knocked him back in the Firebird. And then the Caesar came out and took him off and he was just like... And after that, Matt Deasy said, F this, no more items. So he took out items for TG6. I was playing friendlies against Captain Jack the, the day before the tournament just to see, you know, the, the difference of the skill level between Japanese and Americans. Captain Jack's Bowser beat Ken's Mart. I was like, what? Who is this guy? This, this guy's Japanese. He, he, he's like really, really good. I just couldn't kill him. I was, I just didn't understand why I couldn't kill him. Like every single time I'd smash him at like 100%, he'd live. And that was actually the first time I actually learned about DI. DI, or directional influence, is the ability of the player to influence their trajectory if hit by an opponent. If mastered, this simple skill can keep you alive, where other players would easily perish. The ability that there is directional influence, DI, it doesn't even become a contest for the players that know what they're doing. It's just the back of my head like, DI, DI, DI. And that totally threw off my game. You know, I uh, played Sasta for like third round. I was letting him hit me, I was trying to DI, and then I ended up ultimately losing the match. Yeah, people were surprised by that, and I still remember Azen saying like, uh, Sastafer, when he lost to him, he goes, I raped it with my Pichu. And most people, I assume, are thinking, okay, game over, repeat, he's just gonna sweep through losers, and then DSF actually took him out in losers. It was a bad ride home too, like, I, that was the first time I didn't win singles, I know. Even though we ideally would like to see Azen fight Ken again, because that's just always an epic match, this, this really opens the door for Azen to take it. I fought Isaiah with my Ice Commerce, and, uh, and I beat him. I beat him really, really, like, uh, I don't want to say badly, but like, I two stalked him. Chu beat Isaiah, not only in winners, but again in losers. 2-0 both times, just showing like dominance over Isaiah, which no one had ever done. Everybody was like, oh man, who is this? Look at this Ice Commerce player. Other than Azen and Ken, there wasn't anyone who could really touch Isaiah, or so we thought. And then all of a sudden, Chu comes in with this, Considered low tier at the time character Ice Climbers, like he single-handedly probably moved up Ice Climbers 10 spots just based on that performance. I fight Captain Jack. I lose to Captain Jack. It's set up as inverse Captain Jack, and I'm on the phone with Chu while the finals is happening. I remember getting so pissed off that literally everyone in the venue, it seemed like, was cheering for Captain Jack. I'm like, come on guys, I know Azen's East Coast, but can you support your country? Once Azen won, like I just, I mean, that was it. I remember putting my SIG, like congrats to Azen, best player in the world or something like that. Like I was just like, okay, this is it. Azen's the best in the world, he just proved it. We were talking about, you know, how good Azen is. Best, best in the world now, not because, you know, he beat everybody, but because he also beat a Japanese player. But, I mean, he still won, you know, he still won. So congrats to Azen for that tournament. He doesn't get too excited, but you know, he was definitely really happy about it. He had his big ass trophy that he brought home on the plane. He was showing that off. So he was, he was pretty excited about that.
the aggressiveness and the speed and the combos and everything that goes with that character, it's scary. That was as Isaiah, as anything Isaiah's ever done. He's a weird guy. People loved him for that because, you know, it was, it was different, it was unique. Well, there was NYG girls going around, you know, giving hugs and whatnot. He had this kind of aura about him that just seemed unbeatable if he felt like it. More so than that, really, because, I mean, I was really excited about just holding a big tournament. I was like, okay, I want to kill all these motherfuckers in Melee. Like, I'm going to win this tournament. So I was getting really hyped at that point. The master of diversity. I mean, I could see why he has that title, but if you're talking just about Melee, then we're talking to the real master of diversity right now. That's me. That's, that's me. He was first time. No, he's, he's cool. 